Newcastle's meeting with Manly in the NRL's rivalry round rekindled memories of the celebrated 1997 grand final. And with their skipper Kurt Gidley missing, the Knights needed to draw as much inspiration as they could from that famous upset. Just like that heart-stopping decider, Newcastle were rank outsiders. And the other similarity between the two matches was Manly opening the scoring. Although on this occasion, it took them less than 60 seconds. He's got support on the inside. There's a problem coming early for Newcastle. Jamie Lyon has scored. They've practically come the length of the field. And uh, the Wolfman played a major part before Jamie got the ball back on the inside. If conceding the quickest try of this season wasn't bad enough, Wes Naguama then thumped his kickoff over the dead ball line. Fortunately for the home side, that blunder didn't come back to haunt them. And it took some magnificent defence by Manly to thwart Akila Uate. It's been taken by Uate. Did he get the ball down? I don't think so. Oh, that's brilliant defence. After teaming up with his centre Steve Matai to save one, Michael Robertson snared one three minutes later. And they've extended it. Michael Robertson on the end of a backline raid. Uate tried to take his side's frustrations out on his New South Wales teammate Anthony Watmo. Strong tackle there from Uate on Watmo. The man they call Chock checked in to the rooms to get his ribs, teeth and everything else checked. While his seemingly indefatigable back row partner picked up the slack. Glenn Stewart has scored through the hole the junior sour would have vacated. Matches between these two clubs have often resembled a war zone and this one was no different. The worst injury of all was suffered by Knight Centre Junior Sal, who was taken from the field in a neck brace after being jammed in a tackle leading up to that try. A horrible half for the hosts got even blacker when Daly Cherry Evans dropped it on the toe. A lovely kick from Cherry Evans, it really was. And it did everything he asked of it. And Jamie Lyon would be the first to acknowledge that. Lyon put the cherry on his try, leaving the halftime score looking very lopsided. 22 was Newcastle's winning score in September 97. And Manly seemed satisfied with that because they went through the motions for most of the second term, with Robertson coming closest from a high kick. He's got the ball, Robertson, and he's tackled a metre out. That is changeover. It wasn't until the hour had ticked over that the vast majority of the 22,000 fans had something to get excited about. Not held, he's up and he's away again, McManus, he's over the line, is he? No, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. He's saying a point of the ball has touched the line. The flying Scotsman appeared to be stopped a shade short of the line. But video judge Steve Clark couldn't decide and threw it back to Tony Archer, who happily obliged the locals by giving it. As dubious as that call was, it at least had the effect of stirring the Seagulls from their siesta. Ballon was there, now fallen, cut out ball, that way, dummy, dummy, shoved them over the line he goes. They went over again on their next set of possession after Jamie Bura brushed through some poor attempted tackles. No. There's Bureau, he's gone right through, that defence was awful, there's support left and right, goes to Brett Stewart, you might as well, and Brett Stewart scores yet another try. With the final siren looming, McManus managed to dot down again, despite Manley's claims of obstruction at the point of Reinstig's grubber. Despite McManus's double, it was a bleak afternoon for the Knights, with Des Hasler's dominant outfit far too classy in comfortably retaining second spot on the Telstra Premiership table. David Rowland's Big Pond Sport.